What's up guys, Boss here, and I'm back from the YouTube video, and this time we're going to be playing some ladder using what is currently the best mortar deck right now in Clash Royale. So you guys might have seen this deck not only in top 100 ladder, but also in CRL. A lot of CRL West and CRL East players have used this deck. The reason why it's so popular is it's a very consistent deck. It has a lot of outplay potential, and there aren't too many bad matchups for the deck. Mortar decks and cycle decks in general don't have too many impossible matchups and they have the highest chance of beating matchups that aren't in their favor. You have a lot of bait ele elements in this deck. You have the Goblin Gang, Spear Goblins, as well as the Skeleton Barrel looking to bait out your opponent's small spells. Maybe they have a Zap, Log, Bar Barrel, anything like that. And then you have the Musketeer, which is still really, really strong even after that very small nerf it got. Of all the cards that were nerfed, it's the one that's been the least significant. The Musketeer's barely been affected by the nerf. It's still very, very good. In my opinion, still one of the top five best cards in the game right now. And Knight gets so much value for three elixir, does a really nice job tanking for things such as Spear Goblins, Goblin Gangs, or even your Musketeer. And it just gets a lot of counter push value after you use it on defense. So before we get in the first game, if you guys want to support me, you can use my creator code boss in any Supercell game. Really appreciate all you guys who do use my code. Help support me, help support the channel, and it means a lot. Let's go ahead and get in the first game. We're at 59.66 right now, about top 1800. Not insanely high up because I've been playing a lot of grand challenges and friendly battles with other good players. In my opinion, that's the best way to practice the new meta early season and kind of learn the balance changes. But anyway, here we go. Let's go ahead and start off with a skeleton barrel. That's my favorite starting play. With this deck, you can also do spear goblins to start the game off, but. In this case, since we have Skeleton Barrel, we might as well just start with that. Okay, we can just go for a Knight. Dark Prince, Bar Barrel. Don't really know what that is yet. It could be, you know, a few different things. I'm going to Mortar just because we have this Musketeer down. And let's have the Fireball. Ooh, this is going to be really, really nice Fireball value. He just spent 8 Elixir as well, so he's not going to have a lot. And after that Baby Dragon, he has pretty much nothing. So the Spear Goblins are going to take out the Baby Dragon. Mortar is also going to stay alive, getting at least one more hit on his tower. It could even potentially... I think it is going to get another, I'm pretty sure. Nice, yeah, so it does get another. We already take out half of his tower, and that's exactly what this deck does really, really well. Keeps their opponent... Uh, keeps your opponent, excuse me, you know, on their toes because you just have so many different ways of applying pressure. And we'll see what he wants to do here. He's going to set up for Golem Push. We probably want to make sure that we're spacing out everything. So like our Mortar and the Musketeer. Hopefully he can't Lightning both of them. Uh, I think he might be able to. Assuming he has Lightning, of course. I actually don't know if he does. I just assume so because most uh, Golem decks do end up having the Lightning. I wanted to fireball that Skeleton Dragon, but I'm going to be honest, I don't know if it was necessary, but I guess it's not too big of a deal. And he's going to let the Musk... Wow, so he played the Baby Dragon really late. I don't think that was the best Baby Dragon. We can go with Spear Goblins, and because this Tornado is out of cycle, we don't need to play the Skeleton Barrel off to the side, making it harder for him to pull it to the King, because of course he doesn't have it in rotation. If you guys didn't know, you can go for a Tornado... If you play it correctly on a skeleton barrel and pull it to the king tower so the skeletons hit it just something um if you guys didn't know you can do but it's definitely a time you do need to practice a little bit all right i'm just gonna fireball this night witch and hopefully all this stuff goes in front of the golem so because I, and the reason why I was okay fireballing the Night Witch is because since our cycle is so fast, I knew we were going to get back to another fireball by the time he played the Skeleton Dragons. And we should be able to space everything out here. And we are completely fine. Got a little bit, you know, I wouldn't say close, but we definitely had to focus at the end just to make sure that he didn't end up breaking through with a golem push. Let me check and see. Oh, he didn't even have lightning. He had the fireball, so that explains why he didn't end up using, you know, a lightning when he had that opportunity. If he had it to lightning both the musketeer and the mortar, probably would have been a little bit more difficult if he did end up having the lightning, so luckily he didn't. 
We're one game off 6,000 trophies. Let's keep going. Try to get it right here. And let's see what our starting hand looks like right now. No skeleton barrel in our starting hand. So, I mean, in this starting hand, I feel like log is the best thing to do. We do usually want to be making the starting play. You know, this deck, as I said, is better in single elixir. And since he's not doing anything, I'll just go with Spear Goblins. And this will for sure most likely force something out of him. Okay, so we see a Knight. I mean, Knight's viable in a lot of different decks, so that could be many different things. But with him having Poison as well, it definitely makes me think that it's going to be, you know, Graveyard. And there's the Ice Wizard. I'm going to go ahead and Goblin Gang because he's his Bar Barrel is out of rotation. And he's going to have the Bomb Tower as well. So this could potentially be a little bit difficult just because he is going to have the Bomb Tower, which does a really good job of splashing everything, such as the Goblin Gang and the Skeleton Barrel. So the, in this type of matchup, we probably need to be getting our damage in single. I think I'm going to Mortar because his Knight is going to be out of rotation. Ooh, nice. We got that Knight down protecting the Mortar against that Bomb Tower. And we can apply a little bit of pressure here. Spear Goblin's behind to make sure he can't NATO the Skeleton Barrel to the King Tower. Instead, he's going to NATO the Spear Goblins. And look at all that damage we got. I'm going to let that Ice Wizard go, and I'm going to set up for another Mortar in the opposite lane. Followed up with a Musketeer, so we have a bit of pressure. He's probably going to have to Bar Barrel here. I'm going to get a Knight down, tanking for the Mortar, and once again, he's going to Bomb Tower. So he didn't learn his mistake from last time about me going in for a Knight. And hopefully this... Ooh, we don't get the Mortar to lock on the tower. Oh, let's go. We actually... We're going to keep the Mortar alive even longer. It's not going to mean too much because the Knight is down tanking for it, but I guess it's still good. And look at this. We're doing just such a nice job of pressuring him. And if we protect this Musketeer, oh, we don't, unfortunately. But we're still doing such a nice job of pressuring him right now. Tornado's out of cycle as well, which means we can definitely go in for a Skeleton Barrel. We should at the very least get Death Damage. Mm, yeah, we don't get the Skeleton to connect, but we do get Death Damage. Let's go for another Mortar. Okay, yeah, let's just continue keeping up the pressure because we seem to have him in a really, really awkward situation right now. So if we just continue pressuring him with our Mortars and Skeleton Barrels, things are going to get annoying for him pretty quickly. And the Mortar is going to lock on the tower. That Fireball he was not expecting. Hopefully it can end up getting one more hit. Ooh, so close. Probably like a tenth of a second away from getting another, which is unfortunate. He's going to baby dragon. We can go for a High Musketeer. And then we're going to follow up with a Mortar one more time. And this time, our Mortar is not going to be able to get a connection on the tower, because his Bomb Tower was good. But we're going to get Death Damage from the Skeleton Barrel. We still got a lead. We got to make sure we're keeping up the pressure. We don't want to get in a situation where he overwhelms us with a Graveyard in the opposite lane. That means we need to force him to spend... A lot of elixir on defense because otherwise he's going to be able to build up a massive graveyard push if we're not keeping up the pressure. There's the graveyard. Do we get death damage? No, but we still got a lead here. A pretty big lead. So we could even go for... Oh, he just messed up the palm tower. Okay, okay, I think we won. We're going to block the bridge with a knight. This will get death damage if he ignores it. And we won. Is he not... 
paying attention to the to the to the left lane. He needs about a thousand damage there. So let's go. That was a really nice win. And to be honest, that matchup is definitely not one that I would consider easy. It's one you really have to make sure you're focusing. And I think we did a really good job of pressuring him. We didn't allow him to build up that massive graveyard push he wanted. And honestly, what he probably should have done is gone same lane. He should have gone for graveyard same lane as our mortars. Because typically when you're using graveyard, you want to pressure the same lane that your opponent's going in. That might have been his main mistake. But we make it to 6,000 trophies. Let's keep going, see how high up we can get, and try to build a win streak here. Okay, so what do we have in our starting hand? Ooh, so interesting. This time we don't have a Skeleton Barrel or Spear Goblins in our starting hand. I would say, in this case, the best starting play is probably... Oh, he's going to Lava. So we want to Mortar, same lane as the Lava. When you reverse Lava Hound, when you're using any Siege deck, whether it be Mortar or Expo, you want to be playing your your mortars the same lane as the lava and that's just because if they go for a balloon behind the lava the lava hound will actually um the balloon will end up going in front if that makes sense so we should try to protect this hmm? i want to save my fireball i don't really want to fireball that because then i won't have anything for the balloon so instead i use the skeleton barrel to help out against the lava pups and this way i have my fireball in rotation so if he were to balloon when that happened i would have been able to defend it but he didn't so that's a little bit unfortunate <sighs> we're going to do the same thing again even though he's going opposite lane of where i have most of the damage we need to play a mortar when he goes for any kind of lava hound like that that's what you need to do And I guess we can, ooh. Hmm. Okay, zap and arrows are out of cycle. No, I hope we can get enough damage. Oh, the Spear Goblin's behind. Nice. I, You know what? That's a really solid amount of damage. I'll take that. That's 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 quite a lot of damage. I'm, I'm fine with that. Let's go for a bit, of a bit of a push opposite lane here to try to force some Elixir out of him. Okay, I'm fine with that. Minion Horde. That's five Elixir. And we're going to try to cycle back to another Musketeer. 7 HP left on his tower. I'm just going to log, make sure we wait, make sure we have it. It also cycles us. I guess we didn't really need it, but it's all right. And now, guys, we're in a really solid situation. Look at this. Two Musketeers down. He's going to split Barbarians. Not sure if that's the play. Uh, to be honest, I don't think those Barbarians were that good. In fact, I'm even going to Fireball because the two, the, the two Barbarians... Wow. I don't think he's playing too well right now. So he's going to go for minions. I'm going to go for a skeleton barrel. We want to make sure that we are keeping up the pressure. So then that way he can't build up a massive push. We can't stop. Zap does come down though. I think we're completely fine. Musketeer is going to target the balloon. And now we just, we have, we could probably cycle. If we get death damage from the skeleton barrel, we win because then fireball takes it, I think. Ooh, we don't get it, unfortunately, so I guess... But I think we won no matter what. Unless I really mess up, because I think we can just mortar the... Mm, no, we can't, because he played it on the left side. But I don't think that... the Oh, Musketeer helps out. Yeah, we won. GG. Because death damage is going to put us it, it into fireball range. And even if it didn't, we had log and rotation anyway, so it wouldn't have mattered. So let's go. That was a really nice win. I don't even think it was that bad of a matchup. Things were looking pretty bad at the start of that game. But I think in this kind of, you know, matchup, if you can end up uh, surviving single elixir, it's pretty easy because in his case, he didn't end up having a fireball or a big spell for the musketeer. And you saw what we did when we were in double elixir. 
we were able to cycle two musketeers really easily and you know there's not too much you can do to kill them so they just got so much value on my side of the map and it was really difficult for him to build that lava loom push he was looking for okay nice so we're in the top 900 now let's keep going and see if maybe we can get to 6100 all right we found a universe roller let's give them the good luck and this time we do have skeleton barrel in our starting hands i'm gonna go ahead and start with it because i think it's the best starting play and he's gonna have a magic archer so we can just go for a fireball and he's gonna have to play something else otherwise ooh, heal spirit he doesn't time it correctly you can time it perfectly so it counters all of them that's really really hard to do but um yeah i actually don't think that's something you can always do it's really really hard to time that perfectly uh heal spirit behind your tower to fully counter skeleton barrel me personally i can only do it probably like three and ten times that i uh, that i try it which is less than half which isn't really you know that great dang if i went for the what's good for me though is this is a really good matchup i feel like mortar does pretty good against ram rider and we got fireball for the i don't want to mortar this ram rider because we don't need to it doesn't even get a hit i mean we spent four elixir but i feel like it's better just not to mortar a ram rider if you don't need to just so then that way we can kind of save it for offense because right now we can go for a mortar he can't punish us after the mortar is expired because he doesn't have a ram rider in rotation and this is fine he had to spend a lot of elixir to take out that mortar I'm going to Skeleton Barrel because I bet you he might Inferno Drag. Ooh, no, he's not going to. He's going to Fireball. All right, all right, that's fine. That's fine. We played a Skeleton Barrel. He just went Fireball Barbell. He had to spend six. I think we're relatively even on Elixir. He might be up one, but judging by the amount of tower damage we took on his left tower, I definitely would say we're in a pretty, pretty solid situation right now. Hmm, I'm, I'm gonna wait a little longer just so we can oh my gosh that was a pretty insane amount of fireball value we just got right there he's probably gonna bar barrel this and then when he does we can oh he's not going to he's just gonna ram rider do we get a shot on the tower we do barely i wasn't expecting that to be honest so yeah, things are looking super solid for us. Like I said, I think this is a good matchup for us. Um, I'm going to hold off on the mortar. I think we can wait. I will go for a goblin gang though, just to try... Oh, it didn't go in front of the musketeer. It's a little bit unfortunate. Is he going to barbarrow this? He probably has to. Yeah. Oh, nice. We're going to get a little bit chip. All right. Yeah, we're, we're fine. We just, we just got to chill out a little bit. I think we already, we should already have this win in the bag. We just have to make sure we don't, you know, throw the game. He's going to get a lot of fireball value, but the mortar's still going to get a connection on the tower. So this is really good for us. And now he doesn't have a fireball and rotation for the musketeer. So it's just going to get infinite value on our side of the map. We can pressure with another skeleton barrel. Just keep... Uh, whoops. Whoops, I messed up. Um, I don't actually think it's too big of a deal. Yeah, it's such a good matchup for us that we're actually able to make a mistake like that and still be completely fine. Th to be fair, that magic archer did kind of go where I didn't expect it to. I think it kind of like walked away. But, yeah, it's not too big of a deal anyway. We have just such a huge lead. I'm glad that didn't end up. Uh, why didn't he go in for a bar barrel? Did he not have it in rotation? I'm a little confused. Anyway, we can just go on the skeleton barrel. I mean, anyway, we can just fireball log. Really good matchup for us. Honestly, I kind of screwed up at the end and made a couple mistakes. But we still managed to win. Like, I... I don't know. I thought the, the Magic Archer was in range of the Fireball, but I think it, like, moved. I expected it to stay put, but I think it walked to the right, and that's what happened. 
Let's go ahead and claim the reward, and I guess we can go for one more last one last game here to try to get to 6100. So let me go ahead and open all these up. Getting star points, which is nice. Of course, I have everything maxed except the Electro Giant. We could actually upgrade the Electro Giant a few times, get it to level 9, which is tournament standard. Hopefully the emergency buff the card, because I don't think it's that good right now at all. It's, I would say, probably top three worst cards in the game right now. I think the only cards that are worse than it might be like the E-Barbs and the Mirror. So that's honestly really bad if you think about it. I think, and it might even be worse than the E-Barbs. The Mirror is definitely worse than it, but anyway, let's go for a Goblin Gang on this Mini P.E.K.K.A. Zap, ooh, Zap and Mini P.E.K.K.A., that could be Sparky, it could also be a couple different things, but usually Mini P.E.K.K.A. is in Sparky and Zap is also with Mini P.E.K.K.A. and Sparky. But since he has the Tornado, it could also be something like Golem, it could be, you know, a couple different things. I'm gonna log because I think that's gonna allow the Mortar to shoot the Ewas. And that's pretty good for us, we get the Ewas off the board. I'm gonna go for a skeleton. Uh, mm hmm. It is gonna be Sparky. What's a little bit unfortunate for us is we don't actually have. Um. Our mortar in cycle. This is gonna be a little difficult to defend, I'm not gonna lie. Yeah, yeah, that that gets a hit. All right, let's relax. It get it gets a hit. It's not the end of the world. I mean, because we now know what he has, we can be we can prepare ourselves for defense next time. So what I mean by that is we can go for defensive mortars now that we know he does have a We're not going to play any more offensive mortars this game. We're going to try to get our damage from spells or skeleton barrels. Because we can't be using our Mortar on offense when we know he has Sparky. And there he goes again with the Sparky. I'm going to set up for a defensive Mortar right now. I might actually go ahead and Fireball this Sparky just because when, you, when you're in Double Elixir, you can cycle back to a Fireball pretty quickly. And not bad. We defended that pretty well. He hardly got any damage. And he's going to take some more right now from those skeletons, and we actually end up taking the lead. So this is looking really solid for us here. I'm going to go ahead and fireball the Sparky. Oh, I played the, oh, my mental play. Nah, GG. I think we would have lost anyway. We were kind of getting overwhelmed there. I actually don't even think that's a horrible matchup, but I kind of, at the beginning of the game, got myself in, like, a bad situation. Like, what I mean by that is I should have, I think, um, maybe that offensive mortar was pretty bad because he was able to spark in the back and then get that con uh, sparky connection really easily. Um... I also could have potentially pressured the other lane too, but I think ultimately the start of that game is what really hurt us going into double elixir with him already having that lead and then just, I was kind of, I also was down in elixir because every time I defended those sparky pushes, he kind of got ahead in elixir a little bit, so that's where it got a little bit difficult. But anyway, that's going to be it for the video. hope you guys enjoyed it. Make sure to like the video if you guys enjoyed it. Subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And let me know what you guys want to see next. And I mean, yeah, we won one, two, three, four, uh, four games, lost one, so not too bad at all. 
But yeah, that's going to be it. Thanks again. Until next time, guys.